OK, so before I get into this breakdown at all, I'm just going to let you hear the drums that I've recorded with the tracks that you can decide if this is something that you are interested in or not. So I'm going to play the drums with the track, and then I'll solo the drums a little bit. I'm just going to let you hear that first. You can decide if it's something you're interested in, if you want to move on or stick around. So here we go. I'm tired of setting up a tear down. I'm too tired of messing around. Oh, we got everything we need. And an endless way. Okay, so you've got a taste of it there. You can decide if you want to stick around and hear um, sort of the breakdown on how I got that sound. This song is Shameless Plug. This is one of my songs with uh, a group called Little Rumor. Um, I'll have a link so that you can check out the song if you're interested. But I thought for this channel and for you guys, what might be more interesting is just breaking down this drum sound. And I've probably titled this something like Scratchy lo-fi drums, which I know lo-fi is such a buzzword these days, and I'm trying not to, to clickbait you. But this is, as you can hear, a very, um, uh, very highly stylized sound, not a general use drum sound at all. But I really liked it. I thought it was really cool, and I thought other people might be interested in checking it out. And the best way I could think of to describe it is just like scratchy lo-fi. So let's listen real quick to just the isolated drum track um, again just for a moment and then um, we'll just get right into it and I'll try and timestamp things so that you can click around if you want to just hear about the kick or the, the uh, snare and all the individual components. So anyways, here's the track. Okay, so, oh man, what's the best way to get into this? Let's, um, let's just start with, obviously we've got a lot of bus processing on the drum track itself here, the uh, overall drums processing. You can see I have, um, we'll just quickly go through, I've got three uh, sources I'm working with for the kick, two for the snare, three overheads, two room, although I actually end up uh, not using the overheads, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, floor tom, hi-hat, and then a contact microphone on the hi-hat as well, which is kind of a, a cool touch, I think. So anyways, um, I, think, I think what I'll do is I'm going to leave the drum bus processing on the whole time, and then I'll show you the dry kick um, the the kick sources, and then um, I'll show you exactly what the bus processing is doing at the end. Actually, you know what? Here, I'll just show you what the bus processing is doing now. I'm going to turn it all off on the drum channel here, and then I'll engage it, and then we'll go through the individual channels. So here's drums, no bus processing. And then I'll engage it again. So it's doing a decent amount of work. Um, I think, yeah, you know what? Let's just jump into it here. So let's go into it piece by piece. Um, the first thing I've got is the J37. This is by Waves. This is a tape emulation. You can do a lot of different things with this. You can use it for just like a little bit of coloration. You can do full on heavy distortion. You can add wow and flutter and all, all that sort of stuff. Um, this preset, this mastering fat Titan open preset, um, I just I just like what it does. I, it's it's hard to describe exactly what it's doing, but I'll just flip it on and off. It's subtle, but um, my ear tends to like it. Maybe indiscernible, especially through YouTube, but makes me feel good having it on there. Uh, the next one is the Pro Q three.
And I can't remember exactly why I've got this big boost here that's inactive. I guess maybe that was just something I was playing with. But I, I end up having a cut here around 60 hertz. And I believe that that is just to make room for the bass guitar. Um, so nothing super crazy there. The CLA 76 here, I'll engage that. That's just kind of bringing things forward a little more in your face, just some regular 1176 compression. This is also the Waves one. And then Smack Attack, this is a transient designer by Waves that um, I also really like this. It uh, does exactly sort of as advertised. You can control how much attack and how much sustain you want. And just adding a little bit of attack, I have found to be very, very useful, especially in situations where I would normally use a compressor to try and um, get a little more out of the transient. This just does it um, much more easily uh, for me in some situations. So. Just sounds a little more immediate. And then this Enigma, what this is doing, there's a, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. There's a, like a sweep part here. Yeah, and Enigma engages for just that moment. Just to make it sound kind of trippy and weird for a sec, so nothing crazy happening there. Back over here. And then uh, Isotope Vinyl, which is all over this track. Um, this is a free plugin, um, and it's worth just messing around with the input gain, the output gain, and then the year knob here. I usually don't mess with anything else. You can do you know, scratches, dust, and all sorts of other weird sounds. But even just engaging it um, dry, well, not dry, but just engaging it default settings can be really cool sounding. So. So it just sort of like rounds off the top end, makes it not quite so bright, and um, just makes it sound a little more lo-fi. Hate to hate to use that term, but um, anyways, then we move on to the can, can never figure out how to pronounce this. Psi Q C Q. Um, anyways. With this, I'm adding back a bunch of high end. Go figure. I took away a bunch of high end from vinyl and then put it back in with this EQ. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of like pushing and pulling in that sort of way on here. But anyways. So that's doing a lot to just kind of bring it in your face. I'm also adding in some low end, and I'm adding in some uh, 1.5K. Then I've got this Q3D, which uh, Volco Audio. I got this for free. This thing, this thing's awesome. It's just, it's just an EQ, and I just really like what all these different bands do. You can kind of see what's going on here. Nothing too crazy. We'll keep moving right along. The Waves uh, Pultec, the um, EQP1A. This is pulling off a little bit of high end, and it's also doing the low end trick that most people are familiar with now, where you boost and attenuate uh, at 20 hertz, 20 or 30 hertz, and it just sort of like shifts the low end. It just shifts it down, if that makes any sense. So you can hear the kick's like a little punchier with it off, and then it gets like deeper when you turn it on. So that's what's going on there. And then this, this is something I just started using recently. This is called OTT. And this is a standalone plugin that I think emulates a, a preset of a compressor in Reaper, some other DAW. I can't remember. But this is like a very, very heavy handed form of uh, upwards and downwards compression, so um, expansion and compression. 
and uh, you really got to use it sparingly, I, I found at least. So um, I've got the depth at 15%, and here's what it sounds like. And you can see if I bring that depth up, it's pretty crazy. So completely destroys the signal if you overuse it, but can do some really cool stuff if you um, use it sparingly. So, OK, that's the bus processing. Let's take a look at the kick moving right along. So this was, oh, I can't remember. I think this is either, this has got to be either one of my 22 inch DWs or it might be the 20 inch Slingerland, but I think it's the DW. So let me turn off, oh boy, let's turn off all the processing here and let's check the mics out individually. We'll build it back up. Okay, so it's just the kick in, which is, I think the D112. Sorry for not having all of this information. I recorded this a long time ago and didn't really think I was going to do a breakdown. So anyways, bear with me. That actually sounds like a D6 to me, which I sort of love and hate. And I think I may have just used it for this. So that sounds like it's probably a D6. And then got time adjuster just to um, mess with the phase and keep it in line with the other mics. Um, the kick out mic, I don't use for this section. It comes in in the chorus to add a little bit of weight. So let's hear what the kick out mic is doing. And that I think is actually my I think that might just be the sub kick. Just getting those low lows. And then, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm jumping all around here. Sorry, let's go back to the kick in real quick. And uh, I'll just show you the EQ cur curve, curve, the EQ curve I got going on here. Just pulling out some weird little spots, rolling off the low end, because I'm going to get that low end from other sources, then adding a little bit of top, which a D6 really doesn't need, but here we are. And then we're adding FabFilter Saturn with the old tape preset and then uh, a bunch of drive. And then I also added, it looks like, some low mids here. And that makes it not sound like a D6, which is good, in my opinion. Um, and it sounds really trashy. It doesn't sound that good, which is kind of the point uh, on this record. So Saturn 2. OK, back to the kick out. Sorry about that. I know I'm, I'm scattered here. I'm all over the place. So the kick out, which I'm pretty sure is just the sub kick. That's a homemade one. Yeah, so you can see I'm really with the uh, EQ here, just filtering out everything that I don't need, all the low lows and most of the, you know, everything above um, 85. So I'm just getting this little bit of low end. And remember, this is only coming in for certain parts. So this comes in during the second chorus. So um, here, here it is, kind of the it blending with the kick in. Just adds a little bit of weight in that section. Oh, and then I've got a gate here as well, uh, just to just to just to really tighten that up, so I'm not getting all of this extra low low end bleed. All right. So the worst mic that we've talked about many times in the past. Um, this, I, I think I put it in the kick category because I ended up just sort of using it as basically a kick mic. It doesn't sound like a kick mic here, but as I put the gate on there, I think what I did was, yeah, I think I have this 
kick input going to the gate here so that the worst mic is only opening up with the kick. Yeah. And then EQing. And then throwing Saturn on there. Not as aggressive. I'm using warm tape here, not old tape. All three of them together. Still sounds pretty weird and definitely not like the final product. So let's keep moving along here. So the bus processing, so that's what I'm doing on the individual mics. The bus processing, again, I've got time adjuster here because I think I was adjusting the overall signal to fit in properly with um, like the rooms or the overhead or something. Um, that's not really doing anything that's important here. Uh, I've got another gate. This is um, Gatey Weighty by Boz Digital Labs. I got this for free. I think it's pretty cheap uh, most of the time, though. And um, I won't go too much into it, but I, I really like this gate. Does what a gate should do. All right, an 1176. Which actually isn't isn't doing any uh, gain reduction here. So I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure why I have this on here, actually. I think maybe that was something I was going to use and kind of didn't. So anyways, moving along, Saturn. Once again, one of my favorite uh, aspects of Saturn is that you can saturate different parts of the frequency spectrum differently. So what I've got going on here, I'm driving the top end, or I guess the mids and top end, more than the lows. But I'm also bringing the level up of the low end. OK, then we've got Vitamin, which is another Waves plugin. Um, this is, uh, I believe, another um, like a it's it's like an expander. It's like sort of the the opposite of a um, of a gate or not of a gate of a compressor. Sorry, jeez. I'm just getting this like kind of punchy mid range and high mid out of it. All right. SSL channel, just adding some top end, and that's it. Smack attack, I'm really trying to tighten this up by pulling out some sustain and adding some attack. Now it really just punches. And then here's the big one. Bark of Dog 2. Check this out. This is doing most of the heavy lifting. And to be honest, at least half of the kick signal is basically this. And all this does is, um, well, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend to explain exactly how the uh, the plugin works. But what I'm getting out of it here is a big burst of 79 hertz uh, every time it hits. The boost is way, way up. And yeah, so like half the kick signal basically is um, just a big burst of 79 hertz. All right, cool. Keep things moving here. I know this is already going to be a long one. The snare. Interesting one. All right, so let's listen to the snare here real quick. So this is like really where the, the scratchy sound comes from, if we're talking, if we're calling this scratchy lo-fi drums. And um, I'm pretty sure it's a, um, a piccolo snare that my dad made for me. He cut down one of my old Gretsch snares. Not a nice one, a Gretsch energy, don't worry. Cut down an old Gretsch energy snare and made it a, um, it's like a, I don't know, it's like an inch or an inch and a half 
deep, uh, 14 inches. So it's just it's just any piccolo snare would do this. And then I've got it tuned kind of medium, and then I'm playing very lightly. I'm really not playing that hard at all. So let's go for the dry signal here. Um, let me turn off all dem plugins. So this is almost guaranteed uh, a 57 on top and a 57 on bottom. Here's the top mic. Here's the bottom mic. Pretty much what you'd expect. On the bottom mic, I'm just rolling off some bottom end and adding a little bit of uh, top. And then also adding some smack attack to take away some of the sustain. Doing basically the same thing with the top mic. Time adjuster just to um, stay in phase with, uh, with the bottom mic. And then smack attack. Smack attack's really nice for just giving drums like kind of a more of a point to them. Um, so most of the work is happening in the bus processing here, so in this snare channel. So first of all, just got some basic uh, roll, um, high pass and then a big dip in 217. I don't know exactly why. There was probably, there was probably just a buildup there. That's probably where the fundamental frequency was, and I just didn't want that there, so took it out. Yeah, so that that is definitely where the fundamental is, and it actually adds a lot of weight to the snare, but that's kind of not what I wanted for this particular track. Uh, although it does sound good, maybe maybe I should have kept it in there. Anyways, moving along. Again, time adjuster, just phase stuff. Gate. And this is kind of tough because I had to really try and get it right so that those um, little roughs would stay in there. So managed to do that. Saturn once again. And this old tape preset really kind of starts to trash the signal um, in a good way. Another 1176, you're starting to see some themes here. I tend to get into modes where I use the same plugins over and over. I'm sure you all do the same. And then once again, just like the kick, I ended up not really using this for anything. Interesting. I don't really remember why that is. Anyways, uh, again, just like the kick, we are adding in some top end. And then look at this. Look at what a hypocrite I am. I pulled out all of that, um, that fundamental, and now I'm just adding some weight back in at 165. So anyways, just brightening it up, and then as soon as I brighten it up, rolling off that top end with isotope vinyl. Now it really starts to sound scratchy because I've got this input gain up and the output gain down. Um, and this plugin in particular does something very cool when you push the input gain and then um, pull back the, the output afterwards. So anyways. Uh, 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 this EQ once again from Sound Toys. Just adding some of that mid range again, that's sort of where the scratchiness comes from. And then this thing, um, IVGI uh, by Klanghelm. Um, this is free, I believe it's still free. And man, I use this all the time. This is really nice for just like, just really subtly saturating something. Actually, this is not very subtle saturation, but yeah, you can also you, all, you can also do some heavy-handed saturation. Okay, so kick and snare sound something like. And I know this is already a fairly long video, so I'm going to try and uh, 
pace things well here. Now, the overheads I'm only going to touch on for a second because I ended up not using them. I was using three overheads, um, left, right, and center, which I've been really enjoying lately. They sound like this. Of course, with all the processing and everything. And I just ended up muting them. It just sounded, I wanted everything to sound really tight and focused. And it just sounded too roomy. It just sounded too, um, too ambient. And I just wanted it to be really, really tight and focused. So I just, I just didn't use overheads on this mix at all, which is probably a first for, for me, at least. Um, the rooms, however, I did use, and I did use um, more in certain areas than others. So you can see they're automated to come up during certain sections. So let's let's look at the um, the rooms here. Super trashy. These are my Coles 4038s, um, and the room, by the way, is the same blue room that if you've seen any of my videos in the past year or so, um, it's all in that blue room. So it's, it's it's like a medium-sized room. There's nothing really special about it, and I've got um, sound treatment everywhere, so it's it's fairly dry. Uh, taking all of this off sounds pretty normal. And then we take out the low end. We take uh, out some annoying frequencies. We roll off the top. Really tightens things up. Then we add Saturn and totally trash it. Then we add Smack Attack, take away all of the sustain. So now it sounds very unnatural, which I think is kind of cool. Then we add Isotope Vinyl. And you can kind of see I've got it way down prior. It's it's barely, barely there. And then it comes in during the chorus. So here, let me let me put it in with the kick and snare so you can hear what that sounds like. And in the track, it's kind of cool. It just adds a little more vibe and a little more uh, energy. So OK, not much left here. Uh, floor tom, which I didn't even show you before. There's only a couple couple floor tom hits here, one going into a reintro. This is my, um, this has got to be my 16-inch Camco, uh, a 60s Oaklawn Camco. No processing. Sounds good, but kind of smacky and um, you know not super interesting. So a little time adjuster, uh, a little smiley face curve. I think the mic on this, the mic on this was probably either an SM7 or an AKG 414. The ULS, not 100% sure. Gate. Obvious reasons. Saturn, also hopefully for obvious reasons by now. Yeah, just gives it some crunch. I'm using clean tube, which is not very aggressive, but then I'm driving it pretty hard. And then vitamin, which I really like for like mids and high mids in particular. Just kind of brings it forward. Um, okay, Lord Tom, cool. Oh yeah, okay, so here, this is cool too. So we've got, um, I'll do these next two mics at the same time because they're both on the hi-hat. Um, I just wanted to try something weird and I'm a big Sean Everett fan these days. So I put a contact mic um, and I've got a, I've got a video on this if, if you haven't seen it, sort of explaining what a contact, what a contact mic is and how you can use one. Um, but the regular hi-hat mic sounds like this. And then the contact mic sounds like this. Pretty gnarly sounding on its own, but 
kind of cool in the context of a mix. So the hi-hat is an Octava 012. Um, and I'll just, I'll just pop these plugins on. Here's, here's what it sounds like dry. Getting rid of a lot of low end. A little saturation. I'll talk about this real quick. I'm not actually, I know the ratio's up here, but I'm not actually doing any compression here. The reason I use this, th this whole plugin, in my opinion, is worth it just for this analog mode button. Um, and one, two, and four are fairly subtle, but three does something, something totally unique. It's, um, it, it does different things to different instruments, duh. But what I find is on drums in particular, it like makes things less present sounding. It just like tucks things into the background. So let me see if I can give you an example of that. So hopefully you're using nice speakers or headphones. Um, it is definitely evident, but you know if you're watching on your phone or laptop speakers, I, I don't know if that comes through at all. More isotope vinyl. And then a limiter just to, just to keep it from poking out at all. Um, and then the contact microphone. Here's what it, okay, here's what it sounded like initially. Very unappealing. So heavy, heavy amount of EQ here to get it to sound normal. And you may have heard that, that little sound right here around 3K. I had to like really, really pull down on it. And then same trick here. And then the limiter again. So to get, oh, and then I've panned them uh, in different directions. So I've got the contact mic on the left side and the hi-hat mic on the right side. So together, and they, they sound fairly unnatural, but that's, that's kind of the point. This is not really meant to sound normal or like well recorded drums per se. So. Anyways, um, once again, uh, let me let me just jump into let's jump into the chorus here and let you hear a little bit of the track, and then I'll uh, solo and unsolo the drums, and then just some final thoughts here. <laughs> So again, um, if you're interested in the track at all, I'll, I'll have a link to that in the description. I also, I'm just noticing here that I did my due diligence and I got samples, it looks like. Let's check these out real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nasty. I think I got samples of, yeah, I usually don't get samples of, si of symbols, but I did in this case. I think I might have gotten the ride as well. It's the kick, let's see. Ooh. And you might, you might be noticing some graininess kind of in the tail and some wobbliness. I think that's because I, um, I have some warp going on um, the room mic on isotope vinyl. So it sounds just like gnarly and grainy and kind of wobbly. 
which I think is kind of cool. So anyways, um, I think that's it. This is already a fairly long video. And if you stuck with me this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoy. Hopefully something in here is of interest to you. Uh, if I glossed over something or if you have any questions uh, or want to know anything more, please don't hesitate to um, just let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Check out the tune if you like it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.